So it's Tuesday, December the 26th, and we welcome all our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. This is the best of business morning with me, Bosin Omafaya. We thank you for joining us at this time. This is a special edition of the program, and we're bringing you those best uh, of the shows of those interviews and reports that we had in the outgoing year. So let's get it started. One of the best stories of 2017 uh, for Nigeria was the investor teacher of, the, of Dr. Akumi Adeshina as the uh, nominee or oh, was the, 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 the winner, but of course the man who was being nominated as the... Uh, World Food Prize 2017, and that event in Iowa in the United States got everybody's attention. Uh, Dr. Adeshina, as Nigeria's Agric Minister, of course, his story has been well documented and well uh, spoken about. But beyond Adeshina's uh, work as Nigeria's Agric Minister, his passion and favor for Africa's agriculture goes beyond the four corners of the country. As soon as he became the head of the Abidjan-based AFDB in 2015, Dr. Adeshina continues to make agriculture and the entire agric value chain his key focus. Agriculture is, of course, of one of the high five of the African Development Bank program. So two days before his World Food Prize invested teacher on October the 20th, I had the opportunity to sit down to a very lengthy interview with the AFDB chief. Adeshina, as you may know, is any interviewer's delight. He could speak for hours on end. And that interview held in Iowa two months ago was considered one of the best business morning in 2017. Here is the first part. Congratulations, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, what does this award mean to you and to AFDB, of which you are the chief executive officer? I have actually dedicated my life, you know, for the last 25 years. I've been working very actively to make sure that I can help to lift hundreds of millions of people. Uh, out of poverty. It's not a job for me, it's a mission. You know, and I think that you know, to be recognized for all of what I've done over the decades, you know, uh, and including also as Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria, obviously brings quite a lot of personal satisfaction to me. Uh, but you know, for me, basically, it's all about how you get things better all the time. You know, this recognition is great, but I also I think it's a call to do more, a, a call to do more to make sure that we can feed Africa a call to do more to make sure that, you know, we reduce the level of stunting of children in Africa that I care so passionately about, uh, a call to do more to make sure that we can diversify African economies using agriculture as a business uh, for wealth creation. So, you know, for me, it just puts wind behind my sail to do what I always love to do, which is just to lift millions of people out of poverty. So what more would you be doing? Well, first and foremost, I, I consider it quite honestly, uh, you know, embarrassing uh, that Africa is a net food importing region. You know, God has been so good to us in Africa. God gave us so much sunshine, uh, a lot of rain. Uh, we have a lot of very cheap labor. You know, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, arable land. You know, we should be a global powerhouse in food and agriculture. And so for me, I don't accept that African countries should be dependent on food imports. And so that's why uh, when I became president uh, of the African Development Bank, obviously, you know, I decided that one of our high five priorities must be to feed Africa. To feed Africa, why? Take a look at it today. 65% of all the available called, you know, uncultivated arable land in the world is not in Asia, it's not in America, Latin America, it's not in the United States or Europe, it's right there in Africa. And so what Africa does with agriculture is going to determine the future of food in the world. And when people think about agriculture, they always think about it as some kind of development sector. No, agriculture is central to how you have macroeconomic and fiscal stability of nations. It's very critical to how you actually transform your rural economy and create millions of jobs. It's very critical to how you also make sure that you have your balance of payments right. And so for me, agriculture is not just that sector. Agriculture is, a, is, is, a, is at the heart of how you get African economies going. And so at the, at the African Development Bank, as you know, you know, we have launched our Feed Africa strategy, which is to make sure Africa can feed itself within 10 years, to make sure Africa also gets to the top of the global value chains in what Africa produces, like cocoa and things like that. You know, what's the point of producing cocoa and then, you know, you're importing chocolates. It makes no sense. You should be dominating uh, in, in those kind of sectors. And also to make sure that we use agriculture to create a new cadre of young commercial farmers that are going to create a lot of jobs and make Africa's agriculture competitive. And so when I became president, I, you know, uh, I said that we're going to, you know, drive this. And so the African Development Bank uh, will be investing 20, uh, 20, you know, uh, $4 billion uh, 
uh, in, in that sector over the next uh, 10 years to make sure that we can actually make agriculture the new wealth creating sector for the continent. But what would you consider as the clear and present danger to agriculture transformation on the continent? First and foremost, I think it's a mindset problem. You know, because you know, when, when people think of agriculture, they just think poverty, and that's wrong. You know, you take a look at the um, you know, uh, United States, you look at uh, Latin America, you look at Europe. When you think of agriculture, you think of billionaires, you're thinking of millionaires and stuff like that. And so for me, the mindset of agriculture has to change among our ministers of, of finance to realize that agriculture, not the old way, but agriculture as a business, it's actually fundamental. Uh, to, uh, to, be, uh, to, be, to be able to do. Secondly, is to make sure that we can get the financing sector, the banking sector behind agriculture. Take a look at the money to be made here. When you take a look at Africa, the population of Africa is rising very fast, urbanization is rising very fast, and people don't drink oil, they don't smoke gas, they eat food. And so how are you going to feed all these people? Are we going to feed them with imported food? No, I don't believe so, because the size of the food and agricultural market in Africa by 2030 is going to be one worth $1 trillion. So if you're thinking money, think agriculture. And so it's very important for the banking sector to recognize that agriculture is very, very important. The other thing that I think is very important to do is to actually make sure that whatever you produce, you add value to it. Africa must industrialize its agricultural sector. You know, I was talking to you a while ago just about the case of cocoa. You know, if you take a look at it today, you know, Africa produces 75% of all the cocoa beans in the world, right? But the size of the chocolate market is $100 billion. And Africa's share of that market is only 2%. Makes no sense. And so the price of cocoa, you know, will always decline, but never the price of chocolates. And the price of cotton that we produce a lot will decline, but never the price of textile or garments. And the price of coffee, which we are also a big producer of, will, will, will decline. But have you ever been to Starbucks and they tell you that the price of, <laughs> of brewed coffee has actually gone down? Never. And so what we've got to do is to actually industrialize the agricultural sector. I'm a firm believer in the fact that the time to do that is now. You take a look at, you know, Nigeria, where I come from. You know, you take a look at the north of the country where we have a lot of challenges, you know, with insecurity there. Uh, you look at northern Kenya, where they have a lot of problems. You look at Somalia, you look at Chad, you look at Niger, you look at Mali. Now, what do you have in common in many of these areas? What do you have in common is what I call a triangle of disaster. And the triangle of disaster basically is Wherever you find the following three, three factors, you have terrorists operating. First and foremost, extreme rural poverty. Second, you also have high level of rural employment among young people. And third, areas where you have high levels of climate and environmental degradation. Anywhere you find these three factors, they are called the disaster triangle, you always find terrorists operating. And so if we want to stabilize our economies, the best way to do that is to make sure that we get agriculture working at the heartland of America, uh, of, of Africa, just like they have in the heartland of America, where you're interviewing me today for this World Food Prize. What we've got to do is to create new hope, job opportunity for millions of our young people, and to take what God has given us, which is agriculture, and to be the best at it in the world. There's no doubt in my mind that that's what we've got to do. Are you encouraged by what you see the Nigerian authorities do in the areas of agriculture in recent years? Well, you know, I'm very pleased, you know, I, I'm actually quite proud in, of, of uh, what we did when I was Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria. You know, we, we, we launched, of course, as you know, the Agricultural Transformation Agenda that allowed us to completely transform the agricultural six, uh, 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 sector. We made agriculture into a very uh, sexy, cool business that people actually can make a lot of money. I'm delighted, you know, to, to, to uh, I, I've been able to get a lot of the private sector into agriculture big time in Nigeria. Uh, we mobilized well over $5.6 billion of investment in that sector. One of them is uh, Aliko Dangote, my good friend. You know, that, you know, he was always thinking about whether to invest in agriculture or not. And, and I couldn't forget the day he came by my office and he said, well, Honorable Minister, I've changed my mind now to go into agriculture. And I was like, whoa, you know, finally you got it done. And he said he's going to put in $300 million into the agricultural sector. And I went back and about three months after, he came back to me and said, well, Minister, I changed my mind. And I said, to what? He said, I decided to put from $300 million, I changed it to a billion dollars. Today, you see Aliko Dangote massively in agriculture. And watch it. 
He's the richest black man in the world. When you see him moving into a sector, you better believe that that's the sector to be. And so I'm very proud of what we've done. I'm very proud of the electronic wallet system uh, that we developed when I was in Nigeria uh, to be able to get seeds and fertilizers via mobile phones to farmers. You know, we were the first in the world, actually, to develop that technology. We reached well over 15 million farmers over four years in every nook and corner of Nigeria. It was a bottom of fiscal policy program that created a huge amount of uh, opportunities for farmers all across the country. You know, and I think that today, you take a look at that technology, it's now being used in many parts of the world. You know, recently the World Bank has taken the electronic wallet system to Afghanistan, where they're going to reach a million farmers uh, just this year. And at the African Development Bank, we're going to take the same technology uh, to get farmers access to seed and fertilizers by mobile phones to 30 uh, to 30 countries. And so we continue to support the Nigerian government. I think the Nigerian government, uh, you know, is on the right track in continuing to support agriculture. I think agriculture is very important to diversify the economy. I think, you know, I must, I must uh, uh, say that the economic recovery and growth program uh, that was put in place at the core of it uh, is also investment in infrastructure because it's not just agriculture alone. You've got to also realize that without electricity, you've got nothing, you know. Because for me, electricity, power, is like blood inside of your, your skin, right? If you have blood, you have life. If you don't have blood, you have no life. It's the same with economies. I've never seen anybody that, any economy that develops in the dark. And so we've got to make sure that, you know, in Africa, including Nigeria, uh, that we have universal access to electricity. You know, when I talk about this, it's, it's, it's the first priority uh, under my presidency at the African Development Bank is to light up and power Africa. And people ask me, you know, why, 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 why do you think that? I say, well, look, even when God made the heavens and the earth, what did he do first? And God said, Let, let's make the earth. He said, let there be light, right? And there was light. And so that tells you that's the most important thing. And that's why at the bank, today we're putting in $12 billion into the electricity sector, power sector to leverage about 45 to $50 billion from the private sector. When you have electricity, you can run irrigation pumps, uh, you know, solar pumps in, in rural areas. You can transform agricultural commodities. You can transform, you know, your crude oil into refined products. You can make sure that uh, you, you also uh, have, you know, businesses uh, uh, of all kinds and industries that are actually adding value to oil, to gas, to minerals, to agricultural products. Power is everything.